guys, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I'm Fred, of course, from the Fred Show on 103.5 Kiss FM in Chicago, and I'm, I'm a huge advocate for the Ronald, Ronald McDonald houses of uh, Chicago and Northwest Indiana. And I'm, I'm really excited to, to meet you guys, to be joined by uh, Jaheem and Martina and Christo. Thank you guys for doing this. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. We're happy to be here. Jaheem, I hear you're a big basketball fan. Are you happy that the, you happy that the Bucks won or not? Yeah, I'm happy that the Bucks won. Yeah, I'm a Suns fan, so you, you and I may have to have it out. <laughs> and it wasn't good for me. You might see a grown man cry if we keep talking about it. It wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So you're a big basketball fan. I heard they put a basketball hoop outside for you. Yeah, they put a basketball hoop because, you know, I love basketball and I like to play it. So they did that too. Can you dunk? You're pretty good. You can dunk. I can barely get up to dunk on it. <laughs> well, Martina and Christo, I, I was hoping maybe you could share with everybody a little bit about your story and, and, and why you're at the Ronald McDonald House and, and kind of talk about the, the impact it's had on, on your lives throughout this process. Sure. So my family, we are from the beautiful island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That's a Caribbean island. And... Uh, we are here, we came to Chicago seeking medical treatment for our son Jaheem, um, who fell ill last September, initial diagnosis with a, a brain tumor. And um, because of our, the absence of the, the appropriate care to treat um, such illness, we had to travel. And we came to Chicago in March, early March of this year, early March. I mean, we had a lot of difficulty getting here because of the pandemic, our visas were out and um, travel, as you know, is just really crazy at this time. And of course, the, the cost implications and to get acceptance at a hospital. And thankfully we were able to, to come to Illinois and get acceptance at UIC where he is still a patient receiving treatment. Um, initially, when we came here, we were at a friend's house, uh, my husband's friend in Frankfurt. And um, when once we realized that our stay was going to be an extended one, and you can appreciate that it's it's um, when you when you're grown and you have your family and you're away from home, a week or two weeks maybe okay. But um, once it was identified that we're gonna be here for months, we we know we had to find. Um, somewhere to make home in the meantime. And I think through the hospital, they were able to um, find us accommodation at the Ronald McDonald House here in Drexel Avenue, Chicago, which we're tremendously grateful for. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people, they think about that, it, it, that, that maybe you'd have to travel as a family to find the best health care. And then you find yourself in a city or maybe, you know, so it turns out you have a friend, but, but maybe you don't know anybody. Nobody, so, nobody, you know. So where do you stay? What do you do, you know? Uh, it's crazy. And I think because of what we are going through right now, the pandemic, it defines your stay because you, you, you have a sick child and his immune is compromised. You have to be very careful how much you go out, how much of the city you can explore. And sometimes naturally he's doing treatment, he's not well. And... Then, of course, there is that, that um, restriction where you, you really don't know anybody, don't know places, you, you, there's cost, you have to travel by Uber whenever you want to go, wherever, whatever you want to do. So, yes, we do find time sometimes, which is very important for Jaheem to get out in the city, you know, explore a little bit, let him have some fun. Um, but really, it is, is a time when most of it you are alone dealing with with what you're dealing with as, as a child, you're trying to get healthy. And of course you guys, this is a very difficult thing. I, I can't imagine, I don't have children, but I can't imagine seeing your, your child sick and, and, and how difficult or and maybe sometimes maybe powerless you can feel in the process. Do you, do you find camaraderie with other people who are there, other families who are unfortunately experiencing the same thing? I, I think for me, I think that is the that is the one thing that I cherish most. I mean, the the hospitality nature of opposing families at Ronald McDowell House, that that charitable nature of it is it is just commendable. But for me, what I have found is that peace that it gives to to you as a family. Because as you rightly said, when your child 
your innocent, precious baby, I mean, is diagnosed with something, cancer that's, that's so deadly. It is horrifying. It is something that you cannot put into words adequately, especially when there has been no history of anything like this in your family and your child is doing so well and suddenly this is what you're dealing with. And I think coming here, you realize that you are not alone, that there are so many other families and, and how whatever irony there may be in that. There is a peace and a comfort that that brings to you because you're like a family now and you're sharing in the pain and the struggle of other families and, and you're able to encourage and listen to other stories and that helps to build you and your faith and your courage. Families come, they leave with success stories and you to look forward, you, you, you get that hope, you know, that you're gonna make it to the end and you're gonna walk out of the doors with a success story and a testimony to share. And, and, and so for me, um, that, is, that is what I cherish and appreciate most being here because we could have been, if we can afford a hotel, an apartment, but we are there alone and dealing with, but being here and to be among, um, I mean, the, the hospitality here is, is just truly commendable. And to, like I said, to have other families around you who are dealing with, with maybe even the worst situation, is, it really helps you to cope. That was so well said, and, and I won't keep you much longer. Uh, I think Shaheem's a little bored by this interview, uh, and I don't blame him, man. I, you know, just uh, take him a basketball conversation, and he'll and he'll come alive. That's what I was gonna say. You know, you got to go play basketball. I mean, what other what other things do you do, Shaheem, when uh, when when you have some free time to kind of to kind of let loose and, and get your mind off what you're going through? Well, I have a story walking on that I'm writing about this journey, how I am sick and to tell the story after I'm finished with all of this to the world and to help people, give them courage to know that their children can get to this too. That's amazing, that's amazing. And, and aside from basketball, video games or yeah, anything fun? Games. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, what's your game? It. What do you like to play? Um, took a basketball, um, ball hall is another game, mainly those two. Yeah, I got a smile out of you when we talk about basketball. So I'll, hopefully I get to meet you guys someday. And that's, I'll keep that in mind that that's going to be our topic. We'll talk about basketball. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for sharing your story. It's so important, I think, for people to hear uh, you know, stories like yours, people who are actually impacted by the Ronald McDonald House and and. and Hopefully when, when they see this, they want to volunteer, they want to donate um, so they can help out families like, like you. And of course, I, you're in my prayers. I wish you the best. I hope you get back to St. Vincent uh, quickly, um, hopefully before winter, because- Yeah, um, we do hope so too. <laughs> and I hope I can come visit you uh, in, when, when the winter comes, because now I have some friends who live in paradise, okay? Yeah. Well, just permit us to say thank you to you know every donor out there who would have contributed to the um this Ronald McDonald and the other Ronald McDonald houses around. I mean, what you give, it's not just the food and the clothing and the warm blanket. I think the peace and the solace that it brings to families like myself to have that independence and a home away from home, it is just priceless. And that's what I just want to encourage you because there is no value that we could place on 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 the generosity and the hearts of the persons who so please continue to give. I think Jaheem's room was contributed by Southwest Airlines and what's the gentleman's yeah. name? And so we want to take this opportunity to say thank you to them in a very special way. And again, thanks to everybody. And please continue to give. You are impacting lives and you 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 would never know, but you know, you're making a tremendous difference in the lives of, of persons. So give generously to Ronald McDonald House. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing your story. I know it's very personal um, and I think it will inspire a lot of people. Jaheem, stay strong. I hope to meet you one day before you head back home. And obviously I wish you uh, health and happiness, okay? Yep, I hope to meet you too. Thank you. And I, I look forward to reading your story too. So maybe we can have you come on the radio show and we'll, we'll, we'll sell some books for you or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> so you can share your story with everybody else because I'm sure a lot of kids uh, would find strength in, in hearing about about uh, your journey yeah and we'll play basketball and you'll beat me I, i'm six foot five though so i do have that going for me <laughs> yes <Yeah, so laughs> thank you thank you. You, 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 <laughs> thank you so much again it's been a <laughs> thank pleasure thank you guys so much uh yes. be well and thanks for your okay. time okay, okay. you're welcome bye-bye